And I, the first guy said, dude, we haven't uh, had the party yet. I thought it was so weird I'd remember it. Then I heard a woman voice say, this is the sacrifice. She untied my robe and put her hands on my breast. She said, uh, how, did that, how did she test? A guy said, perfectly. She put uh, her body next to me. I could feel her, she was naked. She said to my ear, I'm going to drink your blood. I felt uh, suddenly very sick. I started to collapse. A big guy picked me up and walked with me. Then they set me down and took off the band cuffs. They tied my hands and arms and put a rope around my neck. They took the tape off my eyes. I was in the forest. They had, tried, they had tied me to a tree or something. I was so scared I was shaking. I knew I was going to die. Four naked women walked uh, to me. One was wearing chains with rings in her nipples and she had a big knife. She ripped the uh, tape off my mouth and touched my breast with the knife. Then she grabbed, jabbed at my fa face repeatedly with the knife. I was terrified. I wanted to kill her, the bitch. They tried to the rope, they tied the rope uh, open behind me. They touched me, I, did, I don't want to be graphic, but they did the sexual things to me. They made me have an orgasm. Then they did things to each other and masturbated and had wild orgasms, the bitches. That this was the worst awful woman were doing this to me. I hope they all get terminal, terminal disease and rot in hell. Some guys uh, un, unrolled a plastic, a big plastic sheet in front of me and made a fire. It was getting dark. A bunch of people gathered in front of me. They were all naked and they started chanting some weird language. A man came and stood in front of, uh, of me. He was older than the others, maybe 30. He was over six feet tall and a real lean bill. His hair was almost black, so he was, uh, so was his beard. He had weird eyes. Somebody uh, was behind me and pulled the rope tight on my neck. Uh, he had his hands on my breast. I, I stared at him. He stared at me and, and never blinked. I couldn't help thinking, looking into his eyes. It was like hypnosis. He put me in a trance. It was like start, staring at a snake. Uh, he began to put his penis in me. Then I heard him uh, yelling, loud yelling and guns shooting. The, the snake eye man jerked away from me and stood looking through the forest towards the noise. Everybody ran to the trees. The snake man poured water on the fire and walked away quietly. Then I heard him say, kill her. A naked, uh, a, a naked came, man came forward towards me with a knife. A man came running up with a silver gun and shot him right in the front of me. He was big and tall, old man, and he had a white beard. That's John Van Meter, by the way. Uh, and for, that's the one that was tried. Um, um, and he had a white beard. I heard a loud bang behind me. I saw the shot hit the old man in the side of his stomach and knocked him down. He shot back multiple times while laying down and got up, started cutting the rope on my arms and the knife, with the knife. Uh, somebody else shot at us and, and the man shot back. Then he said something like, hold on girl, I'll get you loose or something. I fell down. The man picked me up with his arms around my waist and walked away fast. He shot me his gun twice and uh, yelled very loud, no more harm will come to this girl. Then he said something about coming straight from God to kill them all. He called them sons of bitches and said he was going to kill them all. I'm pretty sure uh, that's uh, what he said. I think he scared them. Nobody shouted at us anymore. We got in the car and on the road. I think he asked me if I could drive. I said yes. He put me in a, in a car and, and said something uh, fast. Uh, things, uh, and said, and he put me in the car and said some fast things to me. I, all I really heard was go home and stay anonymous. I couldn't believe he was uh, going with me, wasn't going with me. I couldn't believe I was going to live when I was so sure I was going to die before. He wanted me to go, but I asked him, are you an angel, end quote? Uh, I'll never forget his eyes. He had blood on his face, but his eyes glowed brightly blue, like they were fluorescent or something. He said, no, but one sent me to you. He said, now go, I'll call the cops and slam the door. I hated to leave him. I felt safe uh, with him. I don't know why he wasn't going to go with me. I drove as fast as I could. I almost ran off the road a couple of times. I don't know where I was. Even when I finally got to the highway, I went the wrong way until I realized 
where I was and turned around and went home. When I really got home, it was really late. I was still shaking and I had blood on, my, on me <clears throat> where the wounded old man carried me. I felt sick for him. I found no, one out later that um, nobody would even, even knew I was gone. I couldn't believe it. I was hurt by it until I realized it was my own fault. Then with, with this, this was the payback for all the times I fought with my parents over them wanting to know where I was going every minute. I hope the newspaper prints this so I can say to the kids, stop fighting um, with your parents. There is a reason why they want you to know where you are. My brother and I took the car and parked it in Berkeley. He said he'd call the cops and, and tell them where it was. We looked at it in it to see if we could find any who, who belonged to it. It was weird. There was some, nothing in the glove box or ashtray. And no litter on the floor, nothing. Nobody's car is this, this clean. The only thing in it was four black sweatshirts and four black sweat, sweatpants, all identical. We opened the trunk and all that was in there was a used, a, a, a used syringe. Uh, this, then it hit me. This red Pontiac was the car the guy got out of who abducted me. They must have put me in the trunk. We're going to have to uh, the, the, the syringe test and see what they shot me with. Also, uh, when I was showering, I noticed a pit, painful needle mark in my forearm. Then I remembered how they, one bit said, how did you, she test? They drew blood from me while I was unconscious to test for what, AIDS? Then I remembered how that guy said exactly perfect, and I wonder if it was something else. They really scared me. I'm really sick and frightened for the man who saved me. I don't have a TV and haven't been uh, calm enough to watch for anybody else, with anybody else. My wonderful brother has uh, uh, been on the run and hadn't heard anything definite either. I learned last night how you can tell a lot about a man who's looking real close into his eyes. The snake man and the old man who saved me were exactly the opposite. You can see it in their eyes. What I remember what most of this is the shiny blue eyes of the man who saved me. He reminded me of my late grandfather. I want, I, went to, I want him to live because he's a good man who somehow miraculously saved me and because I went down to write in the newspaper and explained to me why he looked like my grandfather. I can't think of him dying and I'm scared to death of what's going to happen. I, I know now why he stayed there. He was mad as hell and he wanted to kill them. My grandfather had a bad temper too for bad people. I hope he does kill them. I know these, these snakes did this before to others like me and if they live, they will do it again. I especially want the snake eye man to die. I never want to see him again, ever. People like this can't be rehabilitated in prison. I can never forgive them. It took me all afternoon and all night to write this. I hope it makes sense to someone, whoever reads it. I had to take a lot of breaks before crying. The sun will be up soon and it will be another day. My brother is leaving soon to mail this away from my home. I don't even know, I want these uh, snakes to know the zip code I live in. Then he's going out to the forest where I think it, I was to look for the man he, who saved me. I'm going to stay home and pray for God to save this man. He saved me. I hope we will save the man. He will save the man who uh, is sent to do this. I don't know if this will help catch the snakes who tried to rape and kill me. I tried hard to remember any, anything I could. I'm still so shaken up. I can't think I'll ever be normal again. That's it. There's 50,000, 50 to 60,000 human sacrifices a year by satanic cults in this country. Okay, I have that from very reliable sources, three different satanic sources. 